everyone. This is Jackie Cooper with Love Travel Scotland. And today our topic is cats, cat, 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 travel, cat, everything. So um, I'm super excited. I have had um, kittens when I was um, young. I don't have a cat right now, but I know that it's in my future. Um, I want to welcome Allison and Yvette to our cat chat. Um, Allison, why don't you go ahead? I love your um, your blouse. It has little cats all <laughs> over it. I know. Why don't you are our cat expert for today? Why don't you introduce yourself and then we'll bounce over to a vet with her little black cat friend who's sitting on her couch. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jackie. I appreciate that. Um, I'm Alison Poulter. Um, I run Alley Cat Perfections, a cat sitting service um, in West Lothian in Scotland. Um, I have a website, alleycatperfections.co.uk. Um, and I also have a Facebook page, Alley Cat Perfections Cat Sitting Service. So you can follow me on a variety of social media, um, which everyone's welcome. I also have a uh, group as well um perfect cat club west lothian um which again um everyone's welcome to come and join in the cat fun um and cat chat uh, was it's pretty interesting um a variety of funny things plus queries or questions um, happy to try and help and support any cat owners with uh, whatever they might be worried about or concerned about or just want to share the love of their lovely fluffy cats <laughs> I know your so, your cat's hiding right now. I know we talked about that. <laughs> yeah, Cookie. Oh, she's gone and sat herself down and is having a wash right now. So she is a British long hair um, seal point. So she's a pedigree, very fluffy, lots of um, grooming, which she doesn't really appreciate most of the time. <laughs> um, so yeah, so um, so that's me. Yvette, how are you? Great, that was <clears throat> lovely to hear your background there, Alison. <clears throat> so Thanks. I'm uh, Yvette McDonald. I'm from Scotland. Um, I've had cats all my life growing up as well. Um, from a youngster, I always started off with had cats. I remember my first ones were called Tom and Jerry. Um, they were super cute. My mum, back in the days, of the, we had Artex, and that's the when you have the plaster that you know sticks on the wall that comes out and like looks like cake icing. Well, our cats used to run up the corner of the, the room just holding on to the Artex. So um, <laughs> oh, wow. it, was, it, was, it was always great fun to watch them. And I always find animals entertaining. So I was always drawn to having cats. And I've got a cat and a dog and they get on perfectly well as well. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm up in Aberdeenshire and co-owner um, of Love Travel Scotland with Jackie. Yeah, yeah. So today, Alison, um, you are going to be sharing some um, creative ways that we can make cat toys, but you also had some cat trivia that you wanted to share with us. Um, you were mentioning a word that we all are having challenges pronouncing, uh, what a cat lover is. Uh, yes, I was not very good at pronouncing it. Big words may don't really go. Um, but if you are an allurophile, it means somebody who loves cats. So I like to think of myself as one of those very much. Um, I think it's a great word if I can say it. <laughs> it's very <laughs> pretty. It's a very pretty word. It sounds very soft, just like I picture cats when you're petting them, you know, kind of mm -hmm. soft and fluffy and stuff. Um, Yvette, what kind of cat do you have? Um, <clears throat> I've just got a regular cat. I just got one that came from somebody's house. I don't actually know what breed she is. Um, she's just a normal short-haired, probably short-haired British cat, I would imagine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she's, she, I don't think she's any particular breed. Although I say she's a short hair, she does actually seem to have quite long hair. So she's, she's weird. She's a short hair, long hair. <laughs> Medium, then. I'll go, I would that, that's that a, a good compromise. I would, I would call that a domestic um, medium here. <laughs> so, so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Um, she is medium here. You're right. She's not quite on the long hair where you need to brush her, and she's so fluffy. Mm. But I definitely mm. noticed that even big as a kitten across her back, even her back hairs are about that length. So right. they're not so the she's, short ones. She's yeah, so she's definitely some a more to medium her. cat. Yeah. yeah. So um, this but yeah, so I've had her since she was about seven weeks old. I got her quite early on. Um during lockdown as well. So I actually got her through September last year. 
So um, it paid a fortune, really hard to find cats, kittens around about that time. So um, yeah, and she's been with us ever since. And she just got to know the dog and the dog was fine with her. And yeah. she's off hiding just now. And the dog's on my knee for a cat chat. <laughs> we've been As, dog yeah. bombed look dog bombed yes. <laughs> so yeah. for um for kittens and for older cats um do they have the same toy needs or are the needs for toys different i would say for most cats, it doesn't really matter too much with the age. They will play, obviously, as they mature. Sometimes they may be not quite as interested as playing as much. But you should always encourage and regularly play with your cats because certainly if they're indoor, um, you know, it's it's not only just the exercise, but it's the enrichment, the engagement, um, you know, that, that kind of hunting skills. Um, and that's why often things like what I have here... Um, I made this earlier, as they said in Blue Peter. So <laughs> just a garden, a wee garden cane. I just broke in half. So it was just a sort of shortish length. And then I've just made a wee pom-pom with some nice natural. Um, this one was more with a silk sort of thread, but just something really simple. Um, just dangling around will engage um, engage them. Obviously, there's <laughs> loads on the market, but you know, certainly you don't have to spend a fortune. Um, most cat owners will tell you, you put a box down and the cat will find it and have hours just sitting in the box quite Absolutely. happy. I, I, was, you know, I was going to say that cats love a box, don't they? And yesterday Absolutely. I opened the delivery that I had and um, and it was just in one of the jiffy bags, you know, with the bubble wrap inside and it was quite okay. a big bag. And I left it on the floor near me. Um, while I was sitting here working away and the next thing I can see is that the dog's on one side of it and the cat's got his head in it and they're playing away together with it it was really quite absolutely. funny absolutely you really don't have to spend a fortune you just need to have a little bit of imagination um my cookie I thought what is she doing and she had gone into my handbag and next minute she'd pulled a receipt out and absolutely loves them just scrunching up the receipt and throwing it in as a bowl and she's quite happy um you know so simple things like that can be really easy to do and give you hours of fun so age-wise obviously as a kitten they you, you know there's a lot more engagement a lot more playful that's you know um but generally I suppose with a kitten, you maybe just need to be a bit more aware that, you know, with things like string and that, that they're not going to get tangled up because of them being so small and a little bit more agile um, and that front. But generally, um, most cats will find some toy. You know, some people, clients will say to me, oh, my cat doesn't play with anything. But sometimes it's just finding that right toy for them. You know, that yeah, they might not like sort of feather things like this on the string but give them a little ball and hours of play and running around um you know people have said to me that you know suddenly like even a plastic top off a bottle of juice will they'll throw around or it's amazing what cats will suddenly just engage with um so yeah it, I used to I used I, to have a cat and she used to actually go into my children's bedrooms and she would take their teddy bears and she would walk around mm -hmm. dragging their oh. teddy bears and she would drag, take them down the stairs as well out of their bedroom. So mm -hmm. it would be so funny. Mm -hmm. She'd have a teddy bear and they were quite a reasonable size teddy bear uh -huh. to her. So she'd like be trying to walk down the stairs with dragging the teddy bear like under her chest. And um, <clears throat> so she would help herself to the kids' toys and mm -hmm. it, she'd find quite a lot of things to play with. My cats were yeah. always very boisterous and adventurous. And mm -hmm. even my kitten, when I got her in September, first thing she did was she would charge up and down the house um, and I have got blinds here, but they're like the fabric blinds. So she actually, she runs up my blinds when she was a kitten and she grabbed the top and just hang there. Hang and I think, oh my gosh, I don't know. It's so bad when she's a kitten, but when she gets a little bit bigger, I'm like, no, seriously, you cannot be doing this because you're going to take yeah. the blinds down in the house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, my little kitten, she loves to run from one end of the house up to the other end of the house. Hang so I do like to open the doors for her because she likes to just charge into the room. Yeah. Yeah, and often there's no reason for that. It'll be sleeping one minute and then yeah. off on the Zoom. I call them their Zoomies, having Zoomie their zoomies. time. <laughs> yes, absolutely, when they're fighting about the place. Yeah. So do you yeah. have to, um, I know with dogs, uh, we have to think about um, them not eating certain things. With cats, um, 
are there things that you have to be careful about um, making sure that it's not in the house or that type of thing? Um, there are some things. Um, I mean, chocolate, it isn't as poisonous to cats as it is to dogs, but it, it can still make them unwell um, if they eat chocolate. And again, you would call your vet if, if you've got any concerns um, of that side. Things also of not eating, like things like chicken bones, you know, cats can be really scavengers and, you know, having things like that, they can get stuck in their throat. So that can still have a, an impact as well. Um, and it's not just food. You can have flowers, like things like lilies. If you have lilies in your house, um, a cat, even just brushing, um, you know, and gets yeah. a bit of the pollen on their skin can be highly poisonous and actually fatal. Um, wow, and, I and, know yeah, that. that. That would be the one that That's I know is... <laughs> generally try not to have lilies when I've got cats about yeah lilies are, I mean there's a few poncettias at Christmas time and that's well that's the main time that they're out um but yeah so again just being conscious of what's around and some cats won't go anywhere near things but again it's just knowing that risk and uh, there's nothing worse than if something has happened and and you've you know either knowingly or not knowingly obviously some people aren't aware and trying to spread that awareness that um you know it can be fatal uh and that can even be you know still in the garden if they're out and about and uh, and again can touch them it, it, it's you know they can be quite poisonous to them as i say well actually they That's right. and even with their own yeah. foods as well cats intolerances they can you know sometimes mm -hmm. they can stomach one food but they can't manage another so yeah. Um, and the only reason I bring food up is because you were saying also when they're out and about and in the garden and such like which is which is very true we have to be careful with the toxins there as well but mm -hmm. what can be really frustrating is when we have a kind-hearted neighbor or somebody like that that wants to feed our cats because they think it's so so cute but they don't realize that our cat maybe has an intolerance of some sort so when it comes home it's violently sick or things like mm -hmm. that happen and it's it's not even because it's hunt and caught something it's because somebody's given it a, a pouch of meat yeah. that it might not have the tolerance yeah. to um, exactly. I used to have that with one of my cats and um, my neighbor cut the doors down used to to feed him and he couldn't he couldn't stomach biscuits if he had biscuits they would not stay down for very long so oh. I know that he would and obviously when they come back up they're just like fluffed up so you actually know he's had biscuits what is he and I know yeah exactly exactly so I knew that he wasn't catching it's not it wasn't an issue with wild thing it was an issue that somebody blessed yeah. them was yeah. you know trying to feed my cat and don't and just why. be and they think just just eat as nice. much as they're given <laughs> well, that and that is a problem in itself is what i was about to say is is the overeating because cats will have this look they have absolutely mastered it over the years of whatever but they know how to sit and look and plead and look as if i'm half starved so if they do tend to wander and they will go to neighbors and then before you know it, they're having about three or four feeds and obesity in the cat is not, you know, it's just the same in humans. It is not good. It has consequences. Um, diabetes, your cats can still get diabetes, um, you know, on their joints um, and that. So it is a real worry. Um, and, and that's often how cats will go because they will just wander and people will go, yeah. oh, it's a stray. And next minute they're taking the cat in and it's like, no, that cat belongs to me. And, <laughs> and, and some people now will put, um, you know, have like collars with like, you know, don't feed me and stuff because of that. Um, and, and certainly if they have got like food tolerance, like that will make them ill like that, you know, people do need to have a better awareness of like, yes, it's a cat and they will eat whatever you give them generally. So um, it, it's not good, not good practice really to, to be feeding cats so, um, because you don't know what diet they're on and what they can or can't eat, um, you know? So you, you can have some cats can be on quite strict diets, um, you know, if they've got wheat intolerances and things like that. So in allergies, um, again, there's all sorts of specialist food. Uh, my previous cat, Charlie, had a urine infection and, and a blocked bladder and had had crystals. So to prevent that um, forming again, because in their food, it, it can naturally kind of help that. So he had to have special biscuits from the vets that would make sure he, he drank lots. Um, so he had lots of fluids and... Um, you know that that it helps so yeah food is food's a wide subject really <laughs> of what's so, good for them um for those that might not be familiar with your business um and why you're such a cat expert um why don't you share a little bit about your background and, and what you do um 
so that way people can know a little bit more about you. Yeah, um, well, I've had cats. I chose my first kitten um, when I was about six, five, six, um, is when my um, family decided we were going to get a couple of cats um, when I lived down south. So I've had cats all the way kind of really and round animals throughout my life. Um, cats became really a real passion back in probably about 2009. I um, decided to adopt um, my cat Poppet um, and she was 11. Um, and I know often older cats sort of struggle at shelters, um, at rescue centers, but she was the best cat ever. She um, was absolutely loving, would sit with me. And that kind of reignited that passion um, for the cat. So come a few years later, um, I was maybe going to buy a cattery at one point um, up at Loch Lomond was one of my um, ideas, but that didn't actually come to fruition. So I was still like, well, how can I work with cats? What can I do? I ended up moving to West Lothian. And so eventually I had the idea of like, well, you know, not every cat likes to go to a cattery. Um, cats like their routines they like their home environment they you know they can get quite stressed when when there's changes that um, it confuses them and and some cats absolutely fine it doesn't bother them but a lot of cats do find that quite a stressful transition for you know certainly if somebody's away for sort of two weeks um so I thought, well, maybe there's an alternative. So I set up um, Annie Cat Perfections in uh, sort of beginning of 2018. And I offer a home service so the cat doesn't have to be stressed. And the cat stays in their environment, stays in their nice home with all their toys and beds and all their normal regular smells. And if they want to go out because they have a cat flap again, that doesn't change their routine. Um, so they're much more settled. Um, the added benefit I have for my clients is that because I'm going into their homes, which obviously can be a bit of a, you know, some people question, oh, it's a bit of a security. I'm giving somebody a key, but I am fully insured. Um, I'm in Scotland. Um, I'm a dis member of Disclosure Scotland. So I have um, several PBGs, which um, is police checked, basically. Um, I've worked in management for years. I've done all sorts of things so from a trust point of view you know I'm very conscious that I am in somebody's property um, so I have a, a real awareness of making sure but their property is safe so I'm moving you know I'll shut curtains I'll put lights on even just me going in and out that shows a bit of movement in the house and you know I'll put the bins out for them uh, you know and just really just keeping an eye on things I'll move the post so it's not all building up behind the, the door and, and I'm often um bit OCD so I'll sort it into the piles of who's who you know so they've all got their nice neat piles of that's theirs and that's theirs so it's nice and easy and sorted for them that's um, really good so you do more than just looking after the cat for them so you're you're oh, doing totally. like home security and you're you're doing little bits yeah. and bobs so yeah that's and little it's personal a touches as well that make you stand out and and maybe from some of the others as well and you build up that rapport with your clients too as you get to know what yeah. they like and things absolutely you know and, and even if they've got fish i'll feed their fish i've got that some Excellent. clients have got a wee fish tank so they're like can you put a bit of fish food in there a couple of nights so you know that that's not a problem um i you know obviously cats is my main um business but that doesn't mean i've got a rabbit on my books um there's a client who has a cat has now got a rabbit so they've kind of <laughs> long story so you know I never say I never say never but that does you know that's just certain animals are not my you know speciality but certainly if somebody's got a fish or a hamster that needs a bit of fresh water and food you know I can I can kind of cope with that um but again when I'm in the house you know I always my priority is to see the cat I like to know that I have seen the cat and that I always just do a bit of a a, a sort of check um yeah, really so a lot you've of got to find the cat first if they've not come to greet you. <laughs> yeah, uh, and most will because they recognise that that's feeding time. And they yes, will I was going to say. <laughs> so generally, they will come and see me. Obviously, some are more um, a bit shy and might hide away or they're chilled and they're just snoozing away. So I like to make sure I've seen them so I know that they're fine. And as I get to know them, um, that's really important to me. So I recognise any changes. So if their behaviour is slightly different, then I know something, 
you know, that uh, alerts me that something might not be right with them. And I'm always just doing visual checks, you know, are their eyes looking weepy or, you know, are they, are they just looking subdued? Because cats are very good at hiding, you know, when they're not well. So it can be difficult to spot that something isn't right with them. And that's why I have to really try and I always meet the, the client and the cats before I do obviously their visits I, I need to go and collect their key but that allows me to just kind of see how they interact and how they kind of are you know when the family's around and I get a, a bit of an insight as to you know how they are and how they react um so that I can identify you know if there is any concerns and that I can raise that you know if they need to go to the vets and be checked then um I always take emergency contact details so I can if I am concerned that something needs to a further investigations or I have had it with some clients and Craig taking uh, trying to take photos of cat's eyes and there was all this kind of and I'm thinking oh crikey as the cat got conjunctivitis and they were like oh no it's fine yeah sorry we didn't mention that yeah the cat has because he has the steroid um so yeah that's quite normal just wipe it away and it's fine and there's me having palpitations and <laughs> practically thinking <laughs> they've got a cat that might be poorly <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and they're like oh it's cool so I'm like all right okay so again but that to me reassures the client that well I am paying attention I am looking yeah. after their cat you know and yeah. um so I now know that um, which is fine but again um you know so you have to kind of try and learn these things and so down to then feeding again if they've got specific diets or some cats I have to weigh their food and it's very specific what needs to be weighed out for them a multitude of what whatever the clients want really feed them I scoop the litters and often I'll clean them out and um, water again I always try and encourage clients to make sure that their feed and their water is separate cats don't generally eat and drink in the same and poop in the same kind of vicinity so um, and it still makes me laugh that you'll be able to buy and it's always a water bowl and a food bowl right next to each other but really you know, and, and I, again, I've had quite a few clients that go, oh, God, you were right, you know, or I've moved it. And then over the holiday, they go, oh, they're drinking so much more by just having the bowl in a different room or, you know, in just in a, a, at the other end of the room or something. Um, and that they will then start drinking more as that that is, you know, it's, it's important that they they t intake, um, intake their water. So. So, yeah, so generally on a day to day, that's kind of what I would do on the visits and. Um, and then after my last visit, um, I then lock up and then put the key through the letterbox um, for them. But again, other clients want me to hang on to it and drop it off when, um, you know, because some people when they're traveling, um, I had one client. that don't got know stuck if you in might get book. delayed. Yeah. Well, they actually got, they he, he was ill and he couldn't board and actually ended up having to stay another night so they were madly and of course of the time difference so I was literally had just put the key through the door when they um contact and the message then kind of come through going oh my goodness we're not going to be back for another 24 hours and there was this cat at the window kind of looking at me and I'm like oh my goodness <laughs> oh, <no." laughs> but there's always ways the landlord managed to have a key and I met the landlord because they uh, so long story but yeah I got key and I got back in and back uh, in yeah so I now always make sure I you know if they're going away somewhere that is there a likelihood and I always say you know if, if you think there's going to be any delays then I can hang on to the key that bit longer as you just never know um so yeah but yeah yeah, so. yeah definitely thorough definitely thorough um I and that's why we have you on as our cat expert <laughs> <laughs> so I know that you have another um cat toy that you uh, were um going to show us and what I love about it is it has a recycling type of feel to it. Um, do you want to show us the, the idea of the bottle? Um, yeah, well, I've got, I mean, I was, I was just going to say, you know, you can buy all sorts of these wee kind of bowls and little oh, things yeah. that they, the, they'll use their paws and they'll pop them to, and again, it's engagement and that they don't just get their treats, but, you know, again, you don't have to buy these things. You can simply get a plastic juice bottle, put some holes in it and then, put in your little treats and put the lid on, you know, and Excellent. again, I think I might try mine with that. <laughs> I and think that will be really amusing to watch. Why do you, you know, put the holes? Why do you put the holes in it? So she can smell it. Oh, okay. So, and then they'll come out. Oh, so, oh, okay. 
So All right, you put bigger around. holes in so they drop out too. So you need to put holes that they, yeah. So okay. It. So it's not so easy. So they keep it about until their food for all drops out. Until their food will, oh, there we go, falls There's out. Five. So, I mean, I just, but again, you can put as many holes or whatever. I just put a couple of in. And again, just not too big, but enough that, you know, they will eventually come out. But, um, you know, and, and like I say, with the we toy, you could be out. I had done, I was out walking yesterday and I just picked up some feathers from birds. So again, you could have that you know, tied at the end um, uh, and to, to do that. Another simple thing is even an egg box, again, that you can just pop some treats in with because again, it's harder to get at them. So from a feeding point of view, you can have your biscuits in, whether you've closed the lid and they have to get in it. <laughs> All sorts of things, you know, just simple yeah. paper bag. Um, Cookie loves to put that, you know, you just throw some toys in there, paper, and then she'll go in and just. I love that. I love that idea. There's some, it's so creative. I also want to just mention that on your website, you actually have some other toys that um, the people can get holiday things as well as other things throughout the year. Um, I remember you had mentioned that as well. Yeah, I mean, at Christmas time, I make, um, I make little stockings and little Christmas sort of tree shapes um they're stuffed with cat um catnip lots of catnip so um the cats do go slightly crazy for them um and i make these are very popular um my kick sticks so yeah this is just one that's ready to go off to a client on monday um so yeah they're just quite funny but loads of catnip in them and they and it, again it goes into that killing instinct so they go into what they kind of bunny kicks um and go a bit crazy for it so um, and I do little mini pillows as well. This was just, again, another little one. It's just a little toy. Um, and I do little fish. Um, so, yeah, so I just do a multitude that, you know, people can order and I can post them. Um, generally, it's in the UK, but that doesn't mean it's not possible. In fact, I think some have actually ended up in America. I think one of my clients um, sent either one to Denmark and one to the States. I think we're over at Christmas time. She wanted some to send out to her friends. So, um, so yeah, so that um, gives the cats a bit of entertainment, a um, bit extra um, that they that they like. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So I That's know great. we're going to be doing other cat chats um, throughout um, the, the month and the year. Um, for those that aren't familiar with a podcast or YouTube, Allison's contact information will definitely be uh, located below. So that way you can reach out to her through her website and enjoy. And then definitely um, like and subscribe. And if you're in our Love Travel Scotland Facebook group, uh, definitely um, share the access uh, to others that love to travel in Scotland and also would like to be on our Love Travel Scotland Cat Chats. Um, so Alison and Yvette, thank you so much for being on and I look forward to chatting with you soon. Great, thank, thank you. you. Bye guys. Bye.